there are a total of 538 electoral votes up for grabs in the Electoral College. These electoral votes are spread out between the 50 states and Washington, D.C. To win the presidency, a candidate must win a majority of those electoral votes. That's 270, if you're keeping score. 538. Yeah, that's a weird number. Here's how we got there. The total number of votes that any state gets in the Electoral College is equal to the number of senators and representatives that state has in Congress. So every state starts with the two votes for their two senators and at least one representative in the House. That's a standard. But they can also have more representatives, depending on their population. So our least populated states, like Delaware and Montana, where there's only one congressperson for the entire state, get the minimum of three electoral votes. Larger states with a lot more citizens and more representatives get, well, a lot more electoral votes, with California leading the pack at 55. This allocation of electoral votes is one source of debate about the Electoral College. Here's why. Since every state gets at least three electoral votes, those smaller and less populous states generally have more electoral votes per voter than the larger states. Let's look at Wyoming versus Texas. In 2016, about 250,000 people voted in Wyoming. That means each of Wyoming's three electoral votes represented about 85,000 voters. But in that same year, almost 9 million people voted in Texas. So each of that state's 38 electoral votes represented about 240,000 voters, almost three times as many. Some think this makes sense. They say the framers of our constitution meant to give more power to the smaller states. They argue that having more electoral votes per voter in smaller states ensures that all states have an important role in selecting the president, even if the consequence is a less equal system. Others believe this approach violates an important democratic principle, the principle of one person, one vote. They argue that we should all have an equal voice in selecting our president because all citizens are equal. One way they suggest doing this is by selecting the president in a national popular vote. A national popular vote is pretty simple. Whichever candidate wins the most votes nationwide becomes the president. All votes carry equal weight regardless of the state they are cast in. A national popular vote would prevent a situation where a candidate loses the presidency despite winning the most votes nationwide, something that has happened more than a few times in American history. But some people worry that a national popular vote might encourage candidates to devote most of their time and attention to urban and suburban areas, places where there are lots of people and lots of votes, while overlooking rural communities. They also worry that a national popular vote ignores something important about the way the American government is set up. In the United States, power is divided between national and state governments. This is called federalism. In a federal system, states have a great deal of autonomy and similar political power regardless of their size or population, just like countries do in the United Nations. One way the Electoral College reflects this is by giving every state a minimum of three electoral votes, regardless of population. Eliminate the college, they worry, and you might compromise this federal system. 